Welcome back to this episode of I Took the Risk. I'm your host, Corey Bishop, and here we have Chaz Ortiz, an author, a fashion designer, and a mentor. We're glad to have you. Let's get into the episode. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? All right, so you want to know like where I'm born and all that? Background, yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. All right, so my name's Chaz Ortiz. I'm 33 years old. I'm um, originally born in Newark, New Jersey. I came to Delaware when I was about 11 years old. Um, we came from like rough environment. Like I seen my cousin actually like kill somebody in front of us. That's why we moved to Delaware. And then we came to Delaware, like we didn't have a place to live. We were living in my dad's friend's basement for a couple years until we ended up getting like an apartment. And then from there, I played bas I started playing basketball. So that was like my first love. Mm -hmm. And I was pretty good in Delaware, you know, all state, you know, you know, something like. Uh -huh. But uh, yeah, I played basketball, and then I ruined my basketball career because um, I was in high school. I started selling drugs, um, selling weed and stuff like that. And then um, so two two weeks after I graduated high school, I got locked up, and um, I actually had a Division One scholarship to play basketball at Lehigh University. Mm. It's crazy because when I was going there, C.J. McCollum. He went there. Yep. He signed there when I was signing there. So I'm like, I could have been playing with him. You know what I'm so after that, I came home and then basketball was done. They're like, oh, he's a knucklehead. We don't want him. So then from there, I just got a job and then I was like, just trying to find myself. And it was, it was a rough, rough, rough little patch, man. <laughs> wow. Okay, that's cool, man. What high school did you go to? I went to William Penn and I went to Glasgow. Hey, shit. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, okay, so what's the story behind God Made? The story behind God Made, man. So I had to back up a little bit before it. Uh -huh. I, had a, I had another business called uh, Check Rock. Mm -hmm. um, it's a basketball camp. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I, everybody know now, like, the um, Busy Bones? Yep. He just got drafted. Mm -hmm. um, actually, like, that was, like, one of the first players I was training mm -hmm. since he was in eighth grade. And um, so I started that camp. But in the midst of that camp is when I started going crazy uh, with the Percocets. I had a like, very, very bad addiction. So um, I left the camp. I lost my connection with all the kids. I disappeared for maybe about two and a half years. I deleted my socials, everything. And um, I just started praying because I, like, I lost everything. Like I lost my apartment. I lost my car. I had no clothes. I had nothing. So I went back home. And then I was like, I started praying every day, just trying to like look for change, and then within that, um, I got the I got the logo. I got the logo in a dream. It's it's crazy how the logo came. And I woke up out my dream and I, I wrote it down, and then um I started to close. From there, it just started building, and building. I wrote a book, yeah. and um that, that's that's exactly how the brand came around. Just from me losing everything and just trying to find myself, found God, yeah. and then everything started changing. Yeah, man, that's yeah. what's up, man. That's that's. I, Cause I would have never thought like that coming from you. Cause I've always seen. I, I paid attention to the Check Rock a little bit mm -hmm. early earlier on in the early stages of it. I think y'all was doing it at the park, yeah, out Green Bank, yep. and uh, over at Prices a couple times. Yep. So and then it, as it progressed, it, it kept growing and stuff like that. That's yeah. dope, man. But I didn't. That that story is amazing. Behind behind the logo, that's that's cool, man. Yeah. Um. So talk to us a little bit about how your past. Um, help shape with the God made and um, on a personal level. Okay. Um, it helped a lot because I feel like like where I came from and the things I used to do, I'm like a, a totally different person. So now it's like I can see like all the flaws I had, like all the mistakes I made, like all the things I was doing, I was doing wrong and things I wasn't like really trying to learn and really not paying attention to anybody that came before me. Like um, old heads that gave me advice and things like that. I want to listen. So now I see it, like, I see it when I'm talking to the kids or I'm talking to my friends and stuff, telling them, like, yo, you should do this, you do that. And they're like, nah, man. I'm like, dang, we really lost out here. Mm -hmm. It's like, it, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. But on a personal level, I pray a lot more. Um, I believe in myself a lot more. I definitely believe in God a lot more. And I don't take nothing for granted, man, because mm -hmm. anything can just go just like that. Definitely. Yeah. I, yeah, that's that's a gem in itself, man, never taking anything for granted. Uh, you know, we live in a society where uh, so many things happen and, and that one mistake or that one slip up, 
you know, you don't know what's going to happen next. So I, I do commend you for, yeah. you know, not taking things or not now not taking things for granted and on a, on a personal level and on a business level. Right. Um, so with your store in Wilmington and um, how how meaningful is it to have that store here, uh, you know, tra- coming from Jersey to Wilmington where you kind of essentially grew up and started, you know, a new lifestyle? Right. Man, the, the story behind this store is, is amazing because when I started selling the T-shirts, uh, my, my brother-in-law, he works at this barbershop right here. Mm-hmm. And um, he, used to, he used to come see me and he's like, man, you got to start setting up your table right here at the barbershop. And I'm like, nah, I ain't, I ain't doing that, man. I'm not setting up a table in front of the barbershop. <laughs> uh-huh. So he's like, man, I'm telling you, just do it. So the first time I did it, I'm like, dang, this is love out here. I made, I made a lot of money out there. So then I went back and I kept going Friday and Saturday for like the whole summer. So then turn around, I'm right next door to the barbershop now. Mm-hmm. So that that story in itself is just like, wow, like how God just set everything up is just amazing. Yeah. But um, being in Wilmington, it's, it's kind of like being in Jersey. It's like the same type of environment. Mm-hmm. And it's so important here because, like the the youth here, they 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 need somebody. Absolutely. And there's really no like no guidance. Like when I was coming up, like the older guys around us, they had us doing the wrong things. Mm-hmm. Like that's how I got into selling drugs because the older guys, they're like, man, look, I give you this phone, I give you this, I give you some money in your pocket, buy you new sneaks. All you gotta do is do this and bring you back this, and that's exactly how it happened. Then I see like older guys here, and they're doing the same thing to the kids. It's like, man, do this. I watch out for you, and I'm like, yo, are you sending them down the wrong path? Like, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. Th- that's why I really like being here because now I can talk to the kids and give them some guidance, give them game, and let them know like, yo, it's, it's more to life than selling drugs. You can, Absolutely. you can be an entrepreneur. You can do this, go to school, do whatever you want to do. But the streets is not it, man. Mm-hmm. It's, it's definitely. definitely not it. Absolutely, man. I see, uh, you know, coming from Wilmington and just seeing a different aspect and there's a lot more avenues now there were some when i was growing up too you know we had the power center uh william hicks the mm-hmm. center over the over west side we had uh west ends now there's a lot more uh stores uh right. you know the uh restaurants everybody's branching out into their different things which given which is given an opportunity for the next generation to pour into to be able to pour into them absolutely yeah um so I know that uh, you talked about your hardships and some, some things you battled through uh, a little earlier. Um, could you kind of hit on that? Like, what's, uh, on a personal level, what was the most difficult thing for you um, to get through at the time? And then on a business level, I know running a business isn't easy. What's uh, a hardship that you had to face with um, your business? Okay. Um, so on a personal level, the hardships, man, it was actually just stopping. Because it's like, you still want it. It's, it's like that. That it's something there. It's like I don't know what what makes you like the addiction is crazy. Like even when I was broke, I, I still wanted it. I still wanted it. But um, what actually helped me change? I got a job at a Verizon, and I always been a store manager. But at this particular point, I had to become a sales rep. So now I'm, I'm in there. I'm like, dang. Like I went all the way backwards. So I'm 30 years old now. I'm making like $12 an hour. So I'm like, what, what am I doing? Mm-hmm. So one day I went there and I was high and I stole two phones. I stole the two phones. I went to the mall and sold them. Mm-hmm. As I'm walking out of the mall, there's somebody walking in. I'm actually holding the door for him. He got an Apple bag in his hand. He had two phones, two new iPhone Maxes. He was like, yo, I got these two phones. You want to buy them? I'm like, how much? He's like, give me a thousand for them. So there's a stand in the mall where you can sell phones at. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, what kind of phones you got? He got he got the Maxis. So I look it up on my phone real quick. I'm like, now I can sell these phones for a thousand a piece mm-hmm. to make two grand so I can make an extra thousand dollars off this dude. But mm-hmm. well, I could just told him, like, yo, just go down there and sell them. Right. So I buy the phones from this guy. I go to the stand, the phones are not real. So the lady's like, I'm wow. sorry, but these phones aren't real. I'm like, what? I just paid a thousand dollars for these phones. <laughs> so mind you, I just stole two phones. Mm-hmm. I made twelve hundred for the two phones, and I I spent the thousand on those phones and they were fake so now i'm like yo that's how fast karma hit me yeah. so I'm, I'm i'm off on work on this day it's a saturday i go back up to the job and i go in the back they're like what are you doing here i'm like no i'm just chilling i go steal two more phones mm. go back to the go back to the spot sell those phones i take that money i went to the casino i lost all the money i just got from the phones oh man but then like the next hour right so i go home 
the ne very next day, they called me. Uh, hey, we got you on camera still on these phones. I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, nah. They're like, yeah, we gonna you had to come up here and turn yourself in. Da, da, da. I'm like, oh my god. So at this time, I'm I'm 30 years old, and I'm like, man, I'm about to go to jail again. Like, and I'm I'm too old for this. Mm -hmm. So I, I ran for a little bit. Then I was like, man, you know what? I'm just turning myself in. So I went down to the court. I turned myself in. I ended up having to pay a fine. But that day right there changed everything. That was the beginning of the change. It was like, I'm going to be a bum. Like, what am I doing? It's like, I was just so upset with myself. So that from that day, it changed everything, man. That day was, was everything. As far as the business hardships, Man, I can't really say any harshness, man, because I'm I'm blessed to be in this position, man. I, I always wanted to have a business since I was a kid. I always told my mom I would buy a house and all this stuff. But um, me being here now, man, it's, it's a blessing. I don't care if I make $20, $40, whatever. It's, I, I'm just grateful to be in this spot, man. So it's, it's really no harshness with the business mm -hmm. because I'm used to working at jobs, making them money. The same thing I was doing for them, I do for myself now. So it's like... I can't complain at all with the business, man. Just, yeah, that's that's really it. The only thing I had struggled with was like, like little things like um, taxes and things like that, where I had to actually learn from somebody and so I could figure that out. But like just the operations and things like that, I always been a store manager, so I know how to do those type of things. Right. So I feel like all the jobs that I had built me up to this point. Yeah. So it's pretty easy for me on on that level. Okay. Oh man, that's 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 cool, man. To to have that come full circle on your personal level to then transition into uh, you owning your own store. You know, like you said, all the jobs that you did help prepare you for exactly uh, this particular situation that you're in now. And, you know, you don't you don't really know who you are until you go through something. Right. So, you know, you went through a lot to now figure out who you are now. Mm -hmm. that, that's pretty dope, man. You kind of touched on it a little bit uh, also. So with you being an entrepreneur, is it, uh, are you a first generation? I know uh, yes. I, a friend of mine, he, he, entrepreneurship runs in his family. So he's in a sense, a legacy kind of thing. Right. Uh, but can you just touch on that a little bit about being a first generation entrepreneur? Okay. So uh, funny story, man. <laughs> I had a job. This is after, after the Percocet thing. I started changing. I started reading a lot and I ended up getting a job real quick. I got a uh, manager job at Cricket. And um, at Concord Mall, I was there for about three weeks. And then um, the manager, the district manager there, he's like, he, he called me in. He's like, man, we want to promote you to district manager. And I'm like, really? I'm like, I just got here. Mm -hmm. He's like, man, we love your work ethic. We, we love how detail-oriented you are. So I'm like, all right, cool. So um, I, I set the position. I went home that night, and I was super happy. I was like, dang, I've been working at Verizon for five years. They ain't never make me district manager. I'm here for not even a month. They promote me. So then... But something kicked it, was like, nah, this is not it. So the next day I'm driving, there's a sign on 95, and it says, uh, pick your quick date. I always look at that sign now, wow. too. Wow. So it's I'm still like, there? it's still there. Really? Pick your quick date, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> so right by the Blue Rock Stadium. Uh -huh. So I'm like, man, that sign talking to me. Uh -huh. So um, I got there, and I was like, man, it's, it's time to go. So he ended up coming to the store that day, and I told him, I was like, man, I, I got to put my two notice in. He's like, what you mean? He's like, I just promoted you yesterday. I was like, man, I know, but I, I'm about to start my own business. He's like, what are you going to do? I'm like, I'm going to sell clothes. I had, I had got the name for God made. Mm -hmm. I'm going to sell clothes. I'm going to write books. And I'm going to start a YouTube channel. And, and I'm going to talk. And he's like, what? He's like, how are you going to do that? Is this not going to work? How are you going to make money now? Like, you didn't even start yet. And I'm like, I got to do it. This is what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. So I put the two you notice in. I went home and I told my parents. I'm like, yo, I, I quit my job. And, uh... I'm starting my own business. And they're like, what? <laughs> like, are you stupid? Like, what are you talking about? I'm like, man, I'm about to work for myself. They're like, Chaz, how are you going to do that? You don't know nothing about being a business owner. Da, da. I'm like, I do. Like, I've been reading. I've been, I learned, I know everything about being a business owner. So they're like, nah, I don't think you should do that. And I'm like, this is what I'm going to do. They're like, well, I'm going to tell you now. Don't think you're going to become some millionaire and you're going to be famous and all that. You need to go back and get you a job. I'm like, what? So I'm like, no. I'm like, that's how you think. But you, I ain't thinking like that. They're right. like, nah, I tried it. It didn't work for me. I'm like, well, not the same. Mm -hmm. Like, I got a different drive. Mm -hmm. I've been down to the bottom, man. Mm -hmm. I already see what that's like. So it's time for me to make some changes. So after that, man, I just I just went for it, man. Yeah. And it's crazy because I went to Florida. After I quit my job, I went to Florida. I had $700 in my bank account. I went to Florida. And I didn't even have enough money to get back home, bro. 
So I called my sister and I said, yo, I need a plane ticket. Send me back. I come back. The next two weeks, I sold 140 shirts, bro. Wow. And that was the beginning of everything. Mm -hmm. From there, it just started going. Wow, man, that's cool, man. <clears throat> that's definitely cool to, that you turned a bad situation into a good situation, even though your family didn't somewhat believe in you. You still had the confidence to believe in yourself, even though, you know, some it may be the people around you or the people that you love the most that don't even believe in you. That's a fact. Um, so... You touched on uh, uh, you starting in the barbershop mm -hmm. uh, on the table. I know having a store now is a milestone for you, uh, but what's next? Kind of what, what's next for God Made or, or in Chaz? Okay, so my next my next thing is um I want to start doing my footwear. So I want to drop the God Made sneakers, which will be coming out in about two or three weeks. Um, I want to eventually get more than one store. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking to get a store in Florida. Okay. As well. That's why I, I keep going back. I went, probably went there like five times this year so far. Mm -hmm. So um, Florida's my next move. Um, build up my online presence and uh, books. So I want to do at least three books a year. Okay. I got maybe like four written, but I'm just planning on a date to so drop them. Mm -hmm. And um, speaking is really what I want to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. So like this is just like like a byproduct of the brand because yeah. this will get more people to like see the brand and wear it and stuff. Mm -hmm. But the most important thing is speaking and, and the books. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I know you did, you mentioned you did write up, you wrote one, and it's actually a really good one, I have read it. Thank you. Yeah, man, uh, so I can't wait to see what you have coming next. And uh, Florida, man, why, uh, why Florida? Uh, just, just, I know, I know the, the pizzazz and the amazement of Florida, why um, Florida? Okay, so Fort Lauderdale, not Miami. Okay, um, okay. Well, it's crazy because uh, through my prayers and everything, I, I built a real good relationship with God, and um, so now just listen. So whatever he tells me to do, I, I listen. And I was thinking that too. Why Florida? Because I have never been there before last year. Okay. So I went there for the first time, and then, like, my mind was completely clear. I'm sitting by the water. I'm meditating. And it was like I could create so easy. And then I'm uh, meeting all these people, and it connects. It's just coming, it's just coming to me. Mm -hmm. So then when I came back, I had a dream that I actually lived in Florida. And then um, so I, I got a vision board that I keep where I put all my goals and things that I want. And um, when I went down there the second time, everything I put on my vision board just, like, popped up right in front of my face. The exact house, the car, like, everything. My title to my book, it was just, like, all, like, little signs. And then I was just meeting all the right people, and it was like, man, you should come out here. You should live here. This is where you need to be. Like, your, your brand had touched a lot of people. But God already put that in me. I was I didn't know why, but Florida's definitely the... It's definitely the place where I have to be at. Plus, I, I like the hot weather. I don't yeah, like being okay. cold. Let's go yeah, I, I'm, I ain't mad at you, man. Yeah. If you out here, get it. Warm, I ain't, go get it. For real. You know um, so, for uh, advice purposes, what advice would you give to a young person or and or an adult that is looking to become an entrepreneur? I would tell them to first learn because it is a lot that you have to do. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely learn your craft first before you just jump out there and take it serious. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people got business, but they don't take it serious. It's like a side thing. Right. So it's like, oh, I'm going to create a side hustle. But if you create a side hustle, then it'll remain a side hustle. Okay. Yeah, I feel like if you don't jump in there and believe in yourself 100%, then you'll never get to where you want to be. But I would say, man, just believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. Before anybody can believe in you, you got to believe first. Oh, absolutely. And keep God first. Mm -hmm. And just and listen to the listen to the advice that you get from your spirit and follow your intuition, man. Follow your heart, because people are gonna lead you in the wrong directions. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't want the best for you. They don't want to see you win. So you can't really listen to people like that. Just follow your heart, man. Get a relationship with God and believe in yourself and go for it, man. Go for it every day, cause mm -hmm. like not to not to keep on going, but uh, uh, you good. I know a couple people with brands, like a couple of my friends, and they're like, "How do you do this? How you do that?" And I tell them, but they don't do it. Mm -hmm. So, like, if you get advice from people that are doing something that you that you want to do, mm -hmm. follow, take heed and follow what they say. There's so many books out there. Like, I read um, Think and Grow Rich. Mm -hmm. That book helped me so much. It's like having a desire, like writing your plans down, a vision board, like always seeing your dreams, seeing your goals right in front of you, reading it every day, and just, like, yeah. taking it serious yeah. because you can't play with this thing. Yeah, man, that that's some great, great, great and impactful advice, man. Uh, I think that having 
that uh, what you said about having somebody to follow or get advice from and take heed on it is very very important. Right. Thank you for coming here and uh, being with us today and talking to uh, talking to us about your story, your journey. Um, could you tell us uh, where they can find where our viewers can find you at? Follow me at God Made three 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 on Instagram, Facebook. I have a God Made page as well. Um, Ortiz Chaz as well on Facebook. Um, my personal page on Instagram is at I am Chaz Ortiz. Um, I have a website I am Chaz Ortiz thirty three dot com. Uh, my YouTube channel, I Am Chaz Ortiz. Basically, everything I Am Chaz Ortiz. <laughs> <Okay. All right. laughs> my okay. book on Amazon, the book that changed your life. I got another book coming next month. It's called A Look in the Mirror. Yep. Okay. All right. Thanks again, man, for being here. It was a great, great conversation, and we hope to see you soon. Have a nice one. Thank you, bro. Appreciate you. All right.